Thank you so much for inviting me, Dr. Obehe. We are going today to speak about uh, ethics. So how title is Back to the Superiority of African Ethical Paradigm. Hello and welcome to Obehe Podcast. I'm your host, Obehe Ewan And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. Why do we have to care about ethics? We live in a time where postmodernism has inferred the destruction of any notion of absolute value. The narrative of one's group has been set by this Western philosophy as the determining element even in the domain of ethics. This implies that if we Africans don't have a solid basis to another, to anchor the validity of our ethical norms, we will be drawn towards lower moral values that are imposed willy-nilly by the West. Moreover, the migration of African ethics from the north to the south of Sahara has brought not only a theological devolution, but also an ethical devolution that needs to be understood. History teaches us that any knowledge in ancient Egypt was underpinned by religion. Now this religion can be proven an exact science. Thus, solar ethics, that is, ethics has defined by solar religion and epistemology, had a strong religious and normative stance that needs to be reintroduced in the different trends of our cultures in order for Africans to resist significantly to any moral debasing influence. We said above that, Af that African traditional religion in its original strand is an exact science. We said above that African traditional religion in its original strand is an exact science. This nature of our religion can be proven thanks to the Kibiti cosmological arguments. It can be proven to be the very brand of the religion of ancient Egypt and Sumer. That original nature of African traditional religion has been kept intact in Bukanga, the Congo religion. The Kibiti cosmological arguments can be summarized as follows. As, as an aggregate of individualities, our temporal universe is individual. An individual temporal universe is naturally the product of an individual creator. The individual nature of this creator calls for the existence of all the similar being, at least potentially causative. That they may have already created or not yet created the temporal universes. We believe that everyone has a story to share. We believe in the power of storytelling in today's digital economy. Yes, we believe that our audience need to be touched at the level of emotion so we can better engage. What about you? Do you believe in storytelling as much as we do? Do you want to reach the hearts and minds of your audience? Then join us with our online training class, Storytelling for Content Creators and Digital Entrepreneurs. Come, come to obehiel14.com slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skills so you can earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. 
Storytelling is a powerful instrument at our disposal. Let's explore it together. See you in the class. Under the hypothesis that any creation abides in its creator, there is an ultimate cause, including all the above reduced potential and effective creators. This ultimate cause is it is possible being, the supreme being. The supreme being is immutable and indivisible. Otherwise, there must be a principle of his mutability and divisibility, a principle greater than him. This is impossible. God, the father mother, being indivisible, each effective and potential creator, each child of God, as a manifestation of an individuality included in the Most High expresses his fullness. We call this fullness the Logos. And he expresses this fullness in an individual manner. This summary introduction of the committee cosmological argument depicts a theism. Which is which includes a supreme being, a creator of this temporal universe, and the logos. This is congruent with the theme of ancient Egypt, where we have the solar atom and ta and Sumer, where we have respectively Anu, Anki, and Enlil, and Wukonga, where we have Nzambia Mfungu Tuledo, Mbumbaloa, and Pinanza. For the full version of the Kemiti cosmological argument, please see our book's titles, Wukonga and the Theocentric Big Bang Cosmology on Amazon.com. The Kimiti cosmological argument can be extended to all the essential doctrines of a salvational religion. Since every doctrine of the Kimiti cosmological argument evolves deductively from the previous one, they cannot contradict each other. Thus, be a set of deductive and coherent Truth, the Kimiti cosmological argument is an exact science. Hence, the congruence of the Kimiti cosmological argument with solar religion, the religion of ancient Egypt and Sumer, leads us to the conclusion that in the origin that it leads us to the conclusion that it is the original trend of the Atair, the, the African traditional religion, and in this original trend, the African traditional religion is an exact science. It follows that contrary to the speculative ethics enforced by the philosophy of postmodernism, any ethics drawn from this African religion exact science can only be normative and based on strong values. So where the ethics, the ethics of ancient Egypt based on the doctrine of the math. African ethics has always been religion-based, scientific, and normative. As can be seen in the notion of the math. The main meaning of the Egyptian notion of the math is to be true. 
in a paper titled Math Notre Ideal, Math Our Ideal. This Egyptian concept has been defined as justice, order, and righteousness. It is the infallible judge dispensing his quality for the good functioning of the universe. This clearly shows that the concept of order, truth, and love are central to the match. The Kemetic cosmological argument shows that God, the Most High, has endowed a precise individuality to each of his children, thus avoiding an infinite, an infinite confusion. Hence, God is not only an infinite intelligence, but also the principle of order. Moreover, God expresses in each of his children his own fullness. This act is an expression of affection, thus expressing an infinite affection to an infinite number of children. God must be love, with capital L, the principle of love. It must be added also that due to his absolute immutability, God cannot deprive the child of God of the Lagos. Thus, the father-mother is eternally loyal to the child, expressing a quality of truth that is loyalty to an infinite number of children. God must be truth, the principle of truth. We infer from this definition of the Kemetic cosmological argument that has the manifestation of order, love, and truth, the principle of math find its explanation in solar religion. Thus, being the outcome of an exact science that is solar religion, solar ethics was in ancient Egypt religious and normative. It was not the result of a speculation like in Western philosophy. The mat is the manifestation of the celestial order on earth. Since the scientific nature of solar religion has been kept intact in Wukonga, we can conjecture that the original religious, the original religious and normative nature of solar ethics has been also kept in this religion. The great ethical line of the Bantu ethnics has been proven to be the Ubuntu. The principle of Ubuntu can be proven to stem from, to stem from the, the, the double nature of the Logos. The primitive cosmological argument proves that the Logos is the manifestation of the fullness of God in his children. Now, the children of God taken around one of them constitute a collective child of God. This collective child of God expresses also the Logos. Thus, the Logos is the manifestation of the fullness of God in the child of God and around the child of God. We infer also from the Kemetic cosmological argument that the Logos is the true nature of the child of God. Therefore, the child of God is in reality the good God expresses in him, the manifestation of the Logos, 
has he he is also the good god expresses around him the manifestation of the logos in ethics this double nature translates into the fact that the care for oneself must necessarily necessarily implies the care for the surrounding community now this is exactly the principle of ubuntu thus like math ubuntu is a scientific religious and normative principle among the conga people the source of ethical norms can be religious or humanistic this is seen in the fact that the Congo people have two words to traduce the idea of law. They have longo and nsiku. But each word has its own connotation. Fukiao, a Congo author, sustains that the word longo to educate, longo forbidden, sacred, kilongo sacred place, bulongo purity, and longo pure, and langu water, and longo marriage are all of them related. To break the law has longo. It tries breach of spiritual law, the fact of trespassing on the logos, a violation of the purity of a child of God or of nature. Thus, longo is no offense against holy ancestors. The representative of Zambi and Fungu to land of the Most High God. The bridge, this bridge, necessarily leads to a reprimand, Bela, from reprimand from the ancestors. Reprimand, which is the consequence of Bela being wrong for having worked contrary to sacred law. The final result of this offense can be a disease, Bela. For the basic Congo, Bela and Bela are not only homonymous, but also synonymous. Obviously, the remedy for this situation includes the spiritual initiatory education, Lunga, whose cornerstone is purification, traditionally obtained through water langu. On the other hand, in Siku comes from the verb Sika, which means to cause an explosion, a big noise. It can be said of a gun, nkele, sika nkele, to fire a gun. Or it can be said of a traditional band, sikulu, sika sikulu, to play music. Nsiku is a norm relative to public order. To breach this norm, kululan siku, literally meaning to lower the siku, that is to lower the ethical norm, is to destroy the elevation of society. In the conception of the Congo people, such a act calls a public outcry, sikankuzu. Otherwise, the public is complicit of the offense against public order. 
It should be added that contrary to the long, the Nsiku is established by a civil authority. The remedy for breaching Nsiku is to pay a fine, futa Nsiku, or to undergo a tumbu, a punishment established by the law. The fact that in the mentality of basic Congo, the Congo people, Kululan Siku, breaching the law, must necessarily lead to a public outcry and an explosion of indignation shows that the public has great, a great responsib responsibility in the maintenance of public order. Therefore, contrary to the longo, which denotes the religious aspects of law, the Nsiku is related to the humanistic aspect of ethic in Congo society. We have seen in the previous shows that the migration of African ethnics from the north to the south of the Sahara has brought a religious devolution, which is the passage of the trend of African tradition, of the trends of African traditional religion from the religion exact science nature to the religion belief nature. This religious devolution resulted in the ethical, ethical revolu devolution. By ethical devolution, we don't mean a moral regression of the ethical norm, but rather we mean the displacement of the explanation of the ethical norm from the religious and humanistic line has seen in Congo culture to a totally humanistic line. This can be realized as one makes a comparative study of the ethics of the Akan of Ghana and that of the Congo people. In a paper titled African Ethics, the Ghanaian philosopher Kwame Gyekye studies the ethics of the Akan and explain it as being wholly humanistic. He writes about his ethics, use normatively the judgment, he is a person, means he is a good, he has a good character, he is generous, he is peaceful, he is humble, he has respect for others, a profound appreciation of the high standards of the morality of an individual's behavior will elicit the judgment. He is truly a person. Oye, Olipa, Pa. One realizes the perfect similarity of these ethics with the ethics of Ubuntu. This similarity led Gekie to opine that the ethics of the Akan can be generalized to all the ethnics of Africa, Mutatis Mutandis. Thus, according to the philosopher, African ethics is not religious, but wholly humanistic. However, we have seen that the principle of math and Ubuntu, the principles of math and Ubuntu have a religious explanation. To be a great content creator in today's fast changing economy, you need one thing, storytelling. Storytelling is a powerful instrument to leverage either for personal use or for your business success. 
This is why this training class, Storytelling for Content Creators and Digital Entrepreneurs, was created. It is designed to help you leverage the power of storytelling so you can stand out from the crowd and earn more in your business. Come to obehiair14.com slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skill to earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. You need the power of storytelling to stand out in the competition. So let's explore it together. See you in the class. And that the Congo ethics have both religious and normal and humanistic origin. It results from these facts that the Congo ethics cannot be explained from the Akans, while the reverse is possible, Mutatis Mutandis. This naturally leads us to the conclusion that the devolution of the traditional religion of the Akan, that is, its passage from the religion exact science to the religion belief nature, has caused the confinement of the explanation of the ethics into the humanistic lion. In this era of globalization, it is imperious for Africans to understand the superior original nature of the ethics bequeathed to us by our ancestors. These ethics can be demonstrated to be based on religious and scientific values. Thus, contrary to the speculative downgrading ethical values of the West, the true ethics of Africa is a superior one. However, the explanation of these ethics has been reduced to the humanistic line due to the devolution of the different trends of African traditional religion. Therefore, it is important for the Blacks to understand the concept of ethical revolution in order to anchor our ethics, ethical norms back in its original superior religious and scientific and scientific basis. All right, this is an important conversation today, talking about ethics. Um, now, I believe that there are some people who do not understand what it even means. So, do you want to uh, give us a kind of um, a definition? How would you describe ethics for people who do not understand it? By ethic, we mean the science of moral living, the science that defines the standard of good in a society, the science that, that defines how the people in society must live in order for good behavior to be maintained in that society. We have seen that math was a principle used in Egypt, and it means order, truth, and love. Math was actually the reflection of the spiritual order on earth. The role of that ethics was to maintain harmony in society, to maintain cohesion in its unity in society. And cohesion and unity means progress in society. That was the nature of Africa, the Africa of yesterday's time, it was a unified Africa. In ancient Egypt, Sumer, Nubia, and Ethiopia, people were speaking the same spiritual language. I don't mean the same spiritual tongue. I mean 
the same, they had the same spiritual principle. They had essentially the same religion, which religion was a science. And that religion was resulted in a fecal norms that the Egyptians were calling the match. And that was the force of the coercion. And that coercion was local and global. And that was the power of the Africa of yesterday's time. So we have gone through colonization. And now colonization, in order to colonize the people, what the Western did, the Western people did was the reverse of, of, of what has been in Africa of yesterday's time. They have divided Africa. They have impaired Africa to be one nation. We know, for example, that Ghana, Togo, and Benin were the same country. But they, they, it has been divided in order to, allow, to, to allow the worst people to dominate Africa. So you see, ethics is very important because it is about unity of the African people. It is important because it is about order in Africa. It is very important because it is about caring for the community. And it is very important because it's about the parts of our nations. And really talking of our nations in Africa and looking at how things are today, I would really like you to expand more on this different way of thinking um, and because, of course, our ethic, our value system affect the way we behave as a people. So I would like you to expand more on that, particularly also maybe in relation to uh, other people that have influenced us a lot, which in this case we are talking of uh, the Western culture uh, and African way of thinking. Since the time of Egypt, the African people knew that there is in the world two kinds of thinking. The thinking of the works and people, which is based on the supposition. I say supposition that reality is material. Now, not a single scientist in Europe, in the West, is able to prove that reality is material. They, they assume it to be so. So it is just a presupposition. And there is the other thing, way of thinking, which is the thinking of the African people, which is based on the demonstrable fact that reality is spiritual. We can prove through the chemical cosmological argument that reality is spiritual while the white people cannot prove to us that reality is material. So we have two kind of thinking. A materially based way of thinking, which we call the lunar thinking, because the, 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 the moon is focused on the earth, which is the symbol of matter. So also is the thinking of the white mind focused on matter. And we have the solar thinking, which is the thinking of the black people, where thought is focused on the divinity, on the ancestors. Whenever you ask a tough question to an elder, he will tell you, let, let me sleep and let the head have a dream. It means that he knows that he will sleep, his soul will peregrinate to higher plane toward the ancestors, and he will get the answer from them. And now you know that the sun was the symbol of the creator God in Egypt, as it is in Bukongo, in other African religions. So we call, in, we call this kind of thinking, solar thinking. So we have two kind of thinking, the lunar, which is materialistic thinking of the West, and the solar, which is the God-based thinking, the revelatory thinking of the Black people. 
from these two different kind of thinking result also two different kind of epistemology or two different different kind of theory of thinking and two different kind of religion we have a solar religion where the god most high is transcendent and is different from the creator if you take the Bodhu, for example the most high god is called nana buluku while the creator is maulisa if you take the ego of nigeria the most high ichupo while the creator ichineke if you take the Konga people, the most high in Zambia Pungutulendo, why the creator is Bubalowa. So solar religion is characterized by a hierarchy called monotheism, while the lunar religion is characterized by the monotheism where the most high is also the creator. But we can prove that that theism is a wrong one. The theologian in the West, they have, they came to the conclusion that it is a logically impossible theism. So if I understand it correctly now, I mean, uh, the supreme being, the most high, and the creator are two separate entities. Can you say something in that line? Can you say something to clarify that line further for me? Correct. Correct, they are two different beings. But since the inception of Islam, Islam and, and Christianity, in many ethnic, those two entities have been confused. So for example, if you ask a Kong people, he will tell you that the creator is Zambia Pungutulendo, which is the wrong. They, have, they, they, they confuse the Most High with Mumbaloa, actually in true African traditional religion. The Most High God is different from the Creator. The Most High God is transcendent. So prayers are never directly addressed to the Most High. The highest God to whom prayer are directly addressed is the Creator. Since the Most High God is an indivisible being, he cannot know evil. Because in him, to know is to be. To know and to be are the same thing because he, he is indivisible. So if God were, if God knew evil, he will be infinitely good and infinitely bad, which is impossible. So the African people know since the time of ancient Egypt that the most high God is not cognizant of evil. So you cannot tell him that you are suffering, that you have trouble. No. So because God, the most high, is transcendent, prayers are directly addressed to one of the one of the children of God, which is the creator, which is, for example, in in, in Vodou. Maulis, uh, Maulisa, and not the Mosai God, who is Nana Buluku. So I can, in, in the true African traditional religion, prayer can never be directly addressed to the Mosai God, but to lower divinities. Actually, we address directly prayer to the divinity divinities who are nearest to us. And those divinities are our holy ancestors. And they bring our prayer to higher divinities. God, the Most High, created the celestial order. In that celestial order, we have God and his children who are the potential creators. So that's the starting schema, you have God and his children. Now we have seen through the chemical cosmological argument that God is love and God is truth. And because God is love and God is truth, he gave free will. He endowed free will to his children. Now, free will means a choice. 
So, from the point of view of the child, the children of God, there is evil in the heaven, but that evil is only potential. Here, I must stress something. In the West, creation is going from nothingness to existence. That's the meaning of creation, going from nothingness to somethingness, to existence. We, this is not the definition of creation in Africa. Since the time of ancient Egypt, creation in Africa means going from potential existence to manifest existence. Now, because the God gave free will to his children, the misuse of, of this free will cause the child of the child of God to make evil go from potential existence to manifest existence. In other words, evil was created by the children of God and not by God. God doesn't know of evil. And what happened by, by, by the bad use of free will, the child of God has turned away from the divine order. Now, you, we have seen that the divine order is indivisible. So by turning away from the divine order, we turned away, we turned away from light, from good, from everything, because God is indivisible. So normally, we should be annihilated. But if we were annihilated, God will have an, uh, under God, undergone a change. Relationally, God will, will change. Now, because God is unchangeable, immutable, absolutely, the falling children of God cannot be annihilated, so they become non-incarnated spirits groping in darkness and chaos. And that's what the Bible say was the beginning nature of the universe, chaos and darkness. So let me stress something here. We have seen that God is the greatest possible being. Because God is the greatest possible being, all reality must be in him. Because if there were a reality outside of God, that reality added to God will result in, in an entity greater than God, which is impossible. So all reality is included in God. So by falling outside of reality, the, tree, the fallen children of God falls in a dream. So actually, the darkness and chaos I have spoken of is a kind of a nightmare, a dream. So the creator was kind of helping us to awake from that dream. So we cannot say that God doesn't, God know it, no, God doesn't know it. It is like your children having a nightmare and screaming of seeing a lion. You don't have to kill the lion, you have just awake your child. So, you see, creation is about helping the children of God getting out of a dream. So, it has nothing to do with the Most High, who is not cognizant of evil, who is the sole reality. All right. God, the Supreme Being, uh, the Most High, is not caused a cognizance of evil. Uh, uh, coming back to the question of ethics and the way that we think and the way that we should think and organize our society, of course, these are things that we should be talking about often that people should understand. Uh, even looking at, for example, um, the principle of Ubuntu and many other beautiful ideas in Africa. 
Let me start with Ubuntu, which is the common line of Orphic. We have seen that the Ubuntu is known in, in, in among the Akan, has Adipa, and it is also known among the Bantu. And we have seen that Ubuntu result from the double nature of the Lagos. The Lagos is the manifestation of the fullness of God in us and around us. So this means that in reality, man is not only the good God expresses in him, man is also, human beings are also the good God expresses around them. So in practical manner, this means that to be is to love. To be is to love. An African people is in reality a caring person. He knows that he must care for his surrounding. He must care for his people in order for him also to be prosperous. My, one of my uncles used to tell me often that roasted peanuts can grow when you, when, when, when you put them on soil. I used to tell me, uncle, it cannot because it's roasted. I said, yes, it can. What he means is that if you take roasted peanuts and you share it with love, the good you are doing to people will come back to you. Now, that is how the ideal African society must work. We know that actually this didn't mean laziness because laziness was condemned in our society. You had to work. You have not to to close your hands and saying, oh, the other people are going to care for me. No, that it, 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 it wasn't, uh, it, it didn't work that way. Every person it was working, but every person was caring for the society. And we have to come back to that idea of society where to be is to care for the community. We have lost our, our basis. Capitalism has not been brought by the white people. There have been capital, capi, capitalism in Africa. Now that capitalism was an ethical one, a spiritually based one. Where in, in the kingdom of Congo, we had a school of trade whose name has been lost. What remain is only some of the doctrines of this school. The main doctrine of this school was this one. This was in this saying, Kinkueno Mbalu, Kiluta. Katula, Kikonda Yika, which means this. Be mindful of the part, the share of the partner of the client. If it is more than it should be, you must take away. If it is less, you must add. So what is meant here is that in business, you must be you must be absolutely honest. You and I know that business is not done this way nowadays. Nowadays, business means essentially cheating, cheating from, from the other people, cheating from the state. Try to get the best of of the law in order to to take much of the profits. That's not the way business was done in Africa, as I have shown you. In Africa, 
business world was based on strong ethical norms, on love, on truth, on the maintenance of order. So what we have to do <clears throat> is that Africa is awakening because it's time for us to awake. The Egyptian told us that the solar cycle will start with the year 2000. We are now in the year 2022. You tell me that we are still sleeping. I'll tell you, oh yes, for the count people, we are still sleeping. But for the initiate like me, Africa is awakening already. We are awakening. And in this situation, the politician, those who work in the cultural sphere, those who were in the scientific sphere, all of us, we must work in order to bring uh, Africa out of the box. What I mean, the box is the materialistic belief that reality is material. When you believe that reality is material, then you believe that, that good is limited. And you believe that we have to fight for that good because it is limited. But when you understand that reality is spiritual, then you understand also that good can flow from the ancestors to you. This is hard to believe for the white people. But it is true, a true thing. And how a poverty lies also in the fact that we have forgotten that big truth. Good can flow from the ancestors to us. We must, we must go out of the box of materialism. We must reestablish ourselves on African uh, solar epistemology and solar religion. We must bring to our capitalism the ethical norms that were used by our ancestor in order to trade. There is a saying in my tongue, which, which is, literally it means that you must knock the vein where your ancestor had walked. But what is meant is that you must care about how things were done by your ancestor. You must follow that way of doing. If we look at ancient Egypt, we are told that there were pharaohs. Actually, Egypt was not governed by the pharaoh. Egypt was governed by the high priest through the means of the pharaoh. So the high priest was the key person because he, he was the one through whom revelation came from the ancestors. And he was showing the pharaoh how to manage the land. This is what is called theocracy. Theocracy doesn't mean God directly governing. No, that theocracy means that the divine ancestor giving direction to the most elevated of the people. And the most elevated of the people was actually the, 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 the high priest. And the high priest was the big counselor of the king. So that was the schema that made the power of ancient Egypt. That was the schema that made the power of the kingdom of Congo. Well, so what do we have to do? We are in a transition. We have to start by the most important thing, the basis. We don't have to start to start by the roof in order to build a house. It wasn't work, it cannot work. 
we have to restore the basis. What is well, what is the basis? The basis is first of all the fact that our religion is an exact science. Then this is the fundamental, because by the time we infuse is in our people that our religion is an exact science, we will build a strong foundation for our culture. Having done this, we will bring unity in Africa. We will bring solid ethical values in Africa. Doing this will bring another kind of education. So things have to be done step by step. The step that need to be set now is a religious one, not a political one, a religious one. We have to rebuild the true nature of our religion because that is the basis. And by doing this, this will lead the other people, the other leader, the cultural leader, the political leader to see that all oh, things can be done and not in another manner. By doing this, we will be get, 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 getting out of the box of materialism. We cannot change things by being kept inside the box of materialism. It cannot work. We have, we have to peer open our shell, the shell of materialism. So that's where the priority. All right, now looking at what you do, do you sometimes get opposition from other scholar like you who might hold uh, opposing uh, point of view to the line that you stand by? Can you see anything in line with that? The opposition is mainly from the white people, not from the black people. Because it's easy for me to convince the white, the black, the, the black people, because I tell them, look, all we do has science is based on a belief. And you and I know that we cannot demonstrate that reality is material. And I tell them, I can prove to you that reality is spiritual. When I say this, they are skeptical. And when I prove this to them, this er arise, they erode, they interest because they are not cognizant of the fact that we can prove that reality is spiritual. They have been told since their childhood that it is impossible. So when I prove this, it makes them become gyres and just to try to understand more of this. So those who are scared about this kind of reasoning is not the black people, but the white people. The problem is the black people is getting them to hear what I'm saying. That's a difficult point for me, to have them hear. But by the time they hear me and they see my, the demonstration I make to them, they are convinced because it's scientific. I use the deduction. I don't use the induct inductive thinking. I use a deductive thinking. Now, a deductive thinking is a thinking which cannot be, where the conclusion cannot be wrong, where the premises are true. So I use a strong way of thinking which makes them, we break any skepticism. So the problem is not uh, the, the black people. The problem is how to get the peer what I'm saying. And the problem is the white people. But I don't, I don't care for the white people. You, you know, the white people, when I, 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 I'm, I, I can give you an example. I wrote a paper and I said to, to a Grecian journal in the paper, I mainly told them not a single Grecian student has learned religion in Egypt, and that religion was a science. 
so that speculative philosophy came from the fact that they didn't learn the true Egyptian religion and they began to speculate about the, the, the doctrines of that religion. That was the starting of speculative philosophy. But on the other, on the other hand, divine mystery was known by the Egyptian because it was the science, religious as science they were teaching. They told me, this is impossible, this is wrong, don't say about this. I, I, I rewrote my paper, sent it to them, they published. Then you know what happened when they published such paper? They put an embargo to me and they tell me, don't come again with another paper. <laughs> that's, that's the way they behave. <laughs> So the problem is not the black, but the white people. But I don't care about the white people as long as the black people are hearing me. That's the more important thing. You see, I was thinking when you were uh, uh, responding to that last question, um, in that why despite having this beautiful idea, we do not run our life according to them? Because they could have made all the difference in the world. What would it mean if we were to run our life on these basic and rudimental principles of how a society should govern itself. Why do we have to practice things that are different from us instead of this idea that are part of us and have been part of us for generations and generations? You have to ask yourself how this principle, this way of living came to be destroyed. <laughs> that's the, that's the, 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 the first question. How it came to be destroyed? It came to be destroyed because the foundation, which is religion, has an exact science, has been replaced by religion has a belief. So it means that the ethics became just just a speculative ethics. Religion became speculative. Ethic became speculative. Uh, the hand result it was we have now postmodernism, where you can write your book, but they will interpret your book the way they want it to be. And you don't have to say it is wrong because that's the way they the way of understanding your ideas. And we are we are we are being led in that way to know uh, today. We are being imposed values that are foreign to us. To be a great content creator in today's fast-changing economy, you need one thing, storytelling. Storytelling is a powerful instrument to leverage, either for personal use or for your business success. This is why this training class, Storytelling for Content Creator and Digital Entrepreneurs, was created. It is designed to help you leverage the power of storytelling so you can stand out from the crowd and earn more in your business. Come to obehiair14.com slash storytelling and learn how to leverage your storytelling skill to earn more as a content creator and digital entrepreneur. You need the power of storytelling to stand out in the competition. So let's explore it together. See you in the class. So what we have to do, we have to go back to the religion as an exact science, because that will bring strong normative values, because the ethics will be based on an exact science. Now, if ethics are based on an exact science, the ethics have solid basis, they cannot be destroyed by speculation. So whatever you may we must do, the first thing for us is to re-establish the basis, which is the scientific nature of our traditional religion. By doing this, this will bring the cohesion of Africa that we need and 
this will give to our ethics solid normative basis and that will open new ways for Africa to get up, to get up. We have to get out of the box of materialism and speculation. I have spoken of the philosopher Kwame Gyeke, who made a research on the ethics of the Akan, a version of Ubuntu among the Akan people. It is called, I think, Onyepa. And according to that, he said, he said, according to him, that that ethic is humanistic. Because he didn't find a way to explain it in a religious manner. But I have started that ethics by using Bukanga, the Congo religion, which is an exact science. Now we have seen that God is indivisible. This is the fundamentals. We have proved, proved we have demonstrated that God is indivisible. And we have seen that each child of God expresses an individuality which is included in God. But now God is indivisible. So it means that each child of God expresses the fullness of God, but in an individual manner. And that fullness of God it was, is what we call the Logos. Now, if we take all the children of God around one of them, those children of God constitute a collective child of God. Now, that collective child of God has also the Logos in him. So we, we have a double schema here. The Logos is the fullness of God in the child of God. Has the Logos it is also the fullness of God around a child of God. So we have a double dimension of the Logos. The Logos is in us. The Logos is also around us. Now the Logos is the true nature of you and me. We know that the purpose, the very purpose of religion is what? The very purpose of religion is to enable the human being to regain his lost nature of being a child of God in a manifest way. So all true, the true religion turns around the notion of the Logos. So how a true nature is children of God, the Logos. We are, we are the manifestation of the fullness of God. But the fullness of God is not only in us, but around us. So it means that we are the good that God expresses in us. We are also the good that God expresses around us. So if you don't care for the nature, for example, we don't care for ourselves. If we don't care for the community, we don't care for ourselves. Caring for, uh, for, for my, my, my being means also that I, will have, I must care also for my community. This is, an, this is linkage. You cannot do one without the other. And this is the philosophy of Ubuntu. It is a religious based, not philosophy, principle of Ubuntu. It is religious based because if we call it philosophy, then it becomes a speculation. No, it's not a speculation. It is a scientific principle. It is based on the fact that we are the good God expresses in us but we are so the good God expresses around us. And this is a strong principle that brings unity and progress in Africa. Thank you so much for this conversation, sir. Now, what would be your final thought, uh, considering what we have discussed today about ethics 
and also the principle of life and the principle that should govern our lives as Africa and as Africans and in Africa. It can be a small message of yours or it can be just to reinforce an important line that uh, you have already made mention of before. Please go ahead and do that. To conclude, I will say this. If you want to walk, you must first see how your ancestors worked. In ancient Egypt, religion, religion under, underpin everything and was the ethical basis for the progress of society. Ethic in ancient Egypt was based on religion, was scientific, and was normative. The West has brought to us a speculative religion and a speculative ethics. It is time for us African people, African people to awake, to reestablish our religion. It is true nature has an exact science in order for us to reestablish our ethics on religious, scientific, and normative basis. This will lead us to build a strong, a powerful society that was Africa of the years, like was Africa of the yester time. Thank you so much for this conversation. I really appreciate it. And I believe that the audience have learned a lot from it. Thank you so much, sir. It has been a pleasure here. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehead Podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehe Ewanfo. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you in the next episode.